All right. I'm going to try to finish up my line art. So I'm going to use my blob brush and my pencil and my small selection tool to get the exact line art I want. And when I have overlapping paths from like the shape tool, remember I can use the pathfinder to merge those together, which makes it easier for me to clean up and edit with the pencil. So all kinds of methods, all very helpful. I'm going to turn this into a little three-dimensional sprocket as well, just by copying it and pasting it. Offsetting it a little bit like that. Then while it's selected, erasing, because it will only erase from the selected path. Then I have these two overlapped paths. I'm going to select them both. And then I'm going to merge them together. Then I'm going to use the pencil tool to flatten this side and this side. So that looks three-dimensional. And that's a way I can use just the shape tools if I'm not confident in my drawing of perfectly symmetrical shapes, right? But in general, I'm going to use Shift B, the blob brush tool, and I'm going to keep inking. I don't usually do mechanical illustrations, right? This is supposed to be kind of a toy, clockwork illustration. And there are other ways you could do this if everything was made of straight lines. You could use the pen tool, for instance, and then control your strokes and then convert them all. But at the end of the day, there's just lots of ways to get your line art. And remember, Shift H gets me to that rotate the paper. It's called the rotate hand tool, Shift H. And then Shift B gets me back to my blood brush. Blah brush. Because depending on the complexity of yours, you might find those shortcuts helpful because you're doing that a lot. Okay, now I'm at this stage. And I'm going to use the pencil tool, which is just in. Hold down command. I'm going to push this border a little bit closer. Again, just redrawing like magic scissors and draw the inside edge to be a little bit closer. And then smooth this transition. Yeah, and it all looks fairly good. Move on to the next part of my line art. When you see a lot of um, anchor points all gathered together, that's usually something that can be smoothed or simplified. So Shift B. And if you're doing this a lot, a lot, you can code a lot of these shortcuts. The Shift H, the Shift B, the N for the pencil tool. You could code a lot of them into your tablet itself. There's buttons on your tablet, so you can not have to use the keyboard. But I don't mind working the keyboard with my left hand and the, the stylus with my right. So I have what looks like uh, shading here. I can do that all with coloring but I'll show you what hatching would look like when it's put into inking. Looks something like that. I don't think I need that here. And that could be quite a bit of work. 
Maybe I'll do a little bit of it. And you see how that smooth tool really helps this feathering to feel parallel. I think maybe that's all I need. Maybe just like that. All right. And then we just have this part to finish. But it is mechanical. So I'm going to do all the kind of parallel edges first. Connect them. All these parallel edges first. It's kind of like hatching. Connect them. This isn't a drawing class, so this doesn't help you understand the perspective. But of course, any art training you have, any practice you've had is going to help you with each aspect. The idea is this is a little walking mechanism for this toy. Oh, that's tricky. So when it gets really tight like that, I tend to use the, the pencil tool to really control both sides. And I might need to make it a little less smooth so it captures my angle changes instead of trying to smooth them out. So knowing how to do it is nice. I'm trying to give you the knowledge in the class of how to do these things. But to be good at it, to really develop the ability, it takes work, it's practice. Lots of practice. And that's when ability turns into skill. But you're not required to be skillful at it. You're just required to know it and try it. And do your best. Professionally, you're not, if, unless you're working as an illustrator, if you're just working in the communications or as PR or in graphic design, you're not responsible for creating these assets, but you are responsible for fixing them and using them for the best purpose, right? So knowing the theory and these tools can help you fix little things, even if it takes you a long time to do it. So that's why we need to understand the, the principles behind it. And the best way to learn and struggle through it is to be making it ourselves. And then for my art majors, this is just another tool for making your self-expressive work. Okay. And this is why cartoons usually don't have straight lines in them. Because they can be a pain. 
We are freehand inking. So I'm going to go to the pen tool and just subtract some of these anchor points so that it forces it to be a straight. There we go. So that's what's cool about vectors. You really can control every aspect of it if you have the patience. Getting straight lines in perspective definitely takes patience. All right, just this last little bit. I'm going to use Shift B, get to the blob brush again. This is the back of this foot. And I think that's all I need. All right, so I'm going to set it to the right angle. And I am going to turn off under my layers my sketch. I don't delete it, I just turn it off. And then now I have vector line art, perfectly clean. I have some paths. I want to make sure those paths don't have too many overlapping paths. So the way to do that is just to select all of them and then use the pathfinder and then use merge and that will just merge all overlapping paths so now the only separate paths are the ones that are free floating okay now i'm going to save it command s as my ai file and now i need it to be a transferable vector line art file and i do that by saying file save as onto my computer not as a, an illustrator file but as an eps save and then i'm going to do it again file save as onto my computer as an svg file so these are the two types of portable vector format why svg well if we use vector.com or we use some vector program other than Illustrator, SVG will work. If we use PhotoP, SVG will work. But we do EPS because EPS works really well within Adobe pro programs. Adobe's EPS is, is their own format. So I can now close Illustrator. Now what I want to do is to put my vector file into canvas as my black line art and I do that from my EPS file I gotta see which one it is it's not that one so I can delete that one all right so it's gonna be this one in some ways it's really annoying this is a new thing that uh, the Mac operating system doesn't show a preview of the image for an EPS, but it helps you see that it's a really specialized file format. It's a vector format. So you can't even open it in preview anymore, which you used to be able to do. So if I double click this, it will open up in Illustrator. If I open it, force it to open with Photoshop, it will force me to rasterize it. And I don't want to do that. So what do I do? This is just like what we did with our logo. We don't want it to be rasterized. We want it to be a smart object that has all the vector components. So I open Photoshop and I say file new or new file. And then I'm going to make that the size I want, which is going to be for a poster. Thinking ahead to when I add text to this and make a poster, 16 inches by 20 inches at 350 pixels per inch. This is the largest we can print in the lab. Right. 